So now, like I mentioned before, let's talk about making your own custom brushes, and it's actually pretty easy. All of the brushes that you've uh, that I've demonstrated today were created using pre-existing uh, brushes. So if I go through here and we do B, so B C tw uh, Twister, it's just going through here and just twisting this cloth, and it's running a cloth simulation. If you go in here to B S a, that's the spiral brush, and it's basically going to twist the geometry around, but it's not running a simulation, it's literally just twisting geo. All you have to do is underneath your brush menu you have, if you don't have it over here, just click that brush menu, just drag it over, and we go ahead and R to kind of clear this out a little bit. Uh, go down here to elasticity, and underneath here you have simulation iterations. So what this number means is at zero, do not run any simulations on brushed or, you know, on brushed, remember that? Uh, while I'm brushing, don't run any simulations. At 100, that's going to tell it use the full amount of simulations as stipulated by the dynamic simulations iterations down here in the dynamics menu. So if this is set to 100, it's going to tell this brush, hey, simulate 100 times per movement as you're using this brush. Now I'm using the spiral brush, and now it's simulating cloth. At 50, you can actually drop this down. I don't know that I've I haven't really investigated the brushes that heavily, but usually they're at 100. But at 50, you can actually tell it, you know what? Do a lighter simulation. Don't do a full simulation iteration. Do a little bit less. Uh, so if that's useful to you or get you a good effect on your brush, uh, feel free to do that. And it actually does kind of do a little bit of a different effect. I kind of I don't dislike it. I'll have to remember that. But anyway, generally speaking, usually it's at 100, and it's going to completely take into account this. So I think the reason why is if you have your brush at 100, if it's not doing what you want, you can just drop this down, and then it's a, more of a global effect as opposed to, you know, you keeping this at 100 and then using your brushes to determine. Uh, it's probably a little bit easier just to change this uh, overall global uh, iteration, but I'll leave that up to you. And one thing I just want to reiterate is while you're simulating this, it's on brush, so it's kind of capping it. If you turn that off, it's going to go through and affect the entire object. As well as if you have any settings over here on, like if we have a deflate turned on, it's going to deflate the object while you're using this brush. And again, even if you have it on brushed, uh, it's still going to be like give you a deflate effect as you're running this mesh uh, and simulating it. It's going to kind of be deflating as it goes. So just keep that in mind that those are going to affect the overall effect. Another real simple one is we'll go into our clay tubes brush. Again, all you got to do, go over here, simulations, iterations up to 100. Now clay tubes is going to have a cloth effect as it works. You can hold down alt and start using it. You can change out this alpha to something else, maybe give it a little bit of a rounder effect. You can crank up the Z intensity. And also remember, just down here, you can also start like deflating on that brush stroke. We'll go ahead and put on brushed. So now as I use this brush, it's going to deflate as I use it, and you get a, another effect. And you can hold down Alt, and you can get another effect as you use it. So definitely check out different brushes and how you can use them uh, to get something usable while you're sculpting uh, on cloth or running a simulation uh, to get the effect you want. One more kind of global thing I want to make sure that you guys remember is over here, let's go ahead and just grab a sphere out of here, hit edit mode, go make polymesh 3D. Let's go in here to transform, and then activate symmetry in the Y, and we'll turn on R for radial count, and we'll say maybe 12. So we have a radial symmetry here. If we go to here to brush cloth hook, for example, and I hit control D on this subject, this cloth will work in radial symmetry, so you can get some very cool effects. Let's turn off deflate. So as I'm pulling this through, you can actually use radial symmetry to kind of go through and manipulate cloth as you see fit. So this might come in handy, you know, doing all sorts of uh, cool effects. Now one thing I didn't really consider but makes sense is that uh, when we were talking about the brush elasticity and the simulation iterations, if you want to have more brush control and less simulation, because uh, remember the simulation iterations at 100 allows it allows this dynamics menu to run all these calculations. If you want to, on your brush stroke, say, you know what, don't run that many calculations. Let my brush do more of the work and let your calculations do less of the work. Then that you can go through here and just drop the simulation iterations down. And that way you'll get more of your brush as opposed to more of the simulation happening.